What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Smallville. Today we are here with Season 1, Episode 9, entitled Rogue. I cannot wait to jump back into this show, so I'd just like to ask you before we do that to subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell so you get notified every time I'm dropping a new episode of Smallville. We're here for the whole 10 seasons, so if you want to join the journey, join it now. While well, we're right in the beginning stages, we're still at the beginning, only Episode 9, so hit that subscribe button, you're not too late, and the like button and all that. Also, if you want to go see the full-length reaction to this episode, all the other episodes I've been doing, Young Sheldon, some new shows that are on the way, and all the movie reactions I've been doing, Patreon, linked in the description below. Go check it out, you don't want to miss out. So, without further ado, let's get in to Smallville, Season 1, Episode 9, Rogue. Let's go. Jeez, <laughs> spotlight came right at me, trying to blind me already. First five seconds. Having fun? Yeah, well, I'm feeling a bit underdressed. Mm. It makes you feel any better? Whitney is just as uncomfortable. Whitney came too. Why don't you join us? I'm gonna go yank Nell away from the jewelry exhibit so we can eat. Yeah, sure. Oh, this is gonna be awkward, I can already tell. Oh, but what fun, what fun. Clark, Whitney, and Lana. Whitney's not my enemy. Yes, he is, Clark. And the sooner you realize that, the sooner you'll find a way to win Lana. Just remember, keep your friends close and the quarterback closer. Always the hopeless romantic, Lex. Victoria? I'm sorry, am I interrupting? Clark Kent, this is Victoria Hardwick, a very old friend. Hi. Champagne. Close, are you gonna keep her? I'll catch up with you later, Clark. <laughs> that was great. Good line delivery right there. You see this? Police? I'm the only reason you're not in a cage right now. Now you get into the IA and you get me those files. Well, is one of them yours? Oh! Dang. Four hours to get creative. <laughs> What the heck? Oh wow, that bus driver's having a heart attack. Oh no, oh no, oh my gosh. Oh, no, not the dog. Whoa, oh, that looked amazing. That looked amazing. What? The bus driver is just okay? That is what? Weird. Ah, crap. I do remember some of this episode. I know that guy blackmails Clark because he now knows Clark has powers. And he's he's blackmailing him to steal something from Luther Corp, but that's all I really remember. So this is one of those episodes now that I don't really remember much at all. I remember the basic premise, and that's it. How is Sir Harry? Distant, inaccessible, and rich. I believe you know the type. What's he want with me? He understands you may have certain negative feelings towards your father. Sir Harry has always had an incredible grasp of the obvious. He was hoping those feelings might work to our mutual advantage. He'd like you to reconsider your position with Luther Corp. Yeah, you're not going to convince Lex. Lex is too big brain to be, well, I guess he's not going to just change his mind and betray his own company for someone else, like where he would be the employee and not the boss. He wants to be the boss, so there's no way he would betray Luther Corp. He'd betray his father, but not Luther Corp. I think you saw last night's accident outside the museum, and this concerns me why. Sorry, I don't know who that is. Hmm. I'd have pegged you for buddies. Guess you're losing your instinct. Maybe you should think about retiring. Shout out Lex for always being a boss, a total G, protecting his friend Clark. Although now Lex is going to have more suspicion on Clark than he already had, so... Oh no. 
he's about to prove his point by trying to murder him. That's kind of crazy. I don't know what they've been feeding you, but that was pretty impressive. Not quite as exciting as last night, but uh, I wanted to be sure. I just realized this is going to be the first episode that we don't get a Freak of the Week, aren't we? Or isn't it? Yeah. He told me to meet him at the beanery tomorrow. I don't want you going anywhere near this guy. I'll talk to him and I'll find out what he wants. Until then... Until then, you live your life, you see your friends. And we're not going to let this thing change us. That's right. This is why I love Jonathan Kent. I love this family dynamic. Jonathan, Martha, Clark. Uh, the writing is so good. I really... It's like... Just like if you're watching my young Sheldon reactions, it's just like Sheldon and his parents. Or mainly his dad, but... Yeah. Love it. Okay, I will give you whatever you want. You just stay away from my family. <sighs> want your son no I'll be in touch so okay wait so he when he says he wants Clark that means he just wants him as a cop I will tell the world what is what that I, know. I don't know best case Clark's under a microscope worst case he's a freak in a jar either way his normal life is over don't push me. Whoa, easy there, Mr. Kent. We were just talking. Oh, you know what? I actually kind of like this guy because he's he's scum, but he knows he's scum. <laughs> kind of. Like, he really plays into it, and I kind of like that. After I made my case, Quan said that if I had that much passion, I should be in charge. Uh, I don't believe this. Chloe, it's the only way he'd reopen the paper. So what? Cheerleading's not enough? Maybe the editor of the school newspaper looks better on a college application. That isn't it. I just figured you could ghostwrite until we got you reinstated. So, okay, so then I would work for you. The paper would still be yours. Wait, wait, wait. Chloe, think about it. It's not a bad idea melodramatic much i get you love the paper chloe but lana's trying to help you like that's actually a good deal i get i get it but at the same time like come on chloe come on i thought you said we were going after bad guys oh we are they're called internal affairs in fact the head oh, of the IA division gosh. is right up there on the fifth floor the man's got a safe so you find it you open it and you bring me whatever's inside. Ooh. Well, there's the safe. <laughs> what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> he chucked the safe out to his car. <laughs> What's your file? It's all yours. <laughs> that is hilarious <laughs> oh i didn't see that coming at all i was wondering why when he got in there he was like smiling when he saw the safe but that was hilarious you better come and take a look at this oh no tell me they didn't find the ship what? Who is this? Looks like he was shot in the heart. You want to explain to me what a dead body's doing in your barn, Jonathan? I have no idea. I've never seen that man before. Ethan, we found this hidden under the seat in the truck. This scumbag somehow planted all this. Uh, it got per it's just gotten personal now. Let's go, Clark. It's time to step it up a notch. The truth is, kid, you didn't leave me with a lot of options! I want my dad out of jail. You complicate my life, I'm gonna complicate yours. Call him now! Tell him what you did. What 
is it, Clark? You want to kill me? You think that's the answer to your problems? I want him out! Well, then we both want something. Only you have a lot more to lose. <laughs> Checkmate. No, that's crazy. This guy is on another level. Imagine the laser eyes activated at that point. Right through his head. He would have died right there. You may think you know how a guy like Phelan works, but you'd be wrong. Sounds like you're an expert. I understand his world. Yeah. He told me you have secrets. There are parts of my life I'm not proud of, Clark. But I don't want to see you or your family hurt. Now let me help. You can't, Lex. I gotta handle this on my own. Okay, Clark, I know you're going through something really tough right now, but that was not cool. Lex has been nothing but the best friend. To treat him like that when he's just trying to help you, that's just, no wonder Lex becomes a villain, man. I'm with Lex, I'm with Lex here. But our next bit of business is gonna be our last. Look, I don't care, you can tell the whole world about me. Clark, you may not care about yourself, but think about your parents. Now, your father's in jail on a murder charge, and whether he beats it or not, he's gonna lose this farm just paying legal fees. I can still make all that go away. So what's it gonna be? Uh, he's such a good villain. <laughs> this is one of my favorite villains, I'm gonna be honest. And it's such against my normal type of villain, as you guys who have been watching from episode one with me know, I disagree with this type of villain usually, but I like it. And Lex is following them. The goat, he is the goat. This might be my favorite episode, by the way. I, this, I am glued to my seat. My eyes are glued to the screen. I'm loving this. The breastplate. You want me to steal it for you? I don't give a damn about the breastplate. I just want the $10 million with the jewels that are on it. Okay, well, great. This is just straight up a crime. Kid, show me the magic. But how do you do it without it being super obvious that someone bent the bars? I guess not gonna do that at all. I guess someone could have used like some kind of plier things or something. Maybe, I don't know. Why are they letting Lex do this? It's kind of weird. I feel like they'd be waiting for the bomb squad, but I guess not. Lex, I guess, is capable enough to come in and, and take control of that situation there. the safe but your fingerprints are all over that breastplate you might be strong but you're not bulletproof yeah he is though oh, he's about to find out he's bulletproof let's go do it or is he gonna move oh he's dodging it uh okay i mean that's cool too shows he's faster than a speeding bullet <laughs> but like it would have been cool to see that he's bulletproof as well Oh, yeah. Wow, and he's gonna get caught with a gun in his hand. You're screwed. You get what you freaking deserve. And a shoot off with the guards. Yeah, you're done. Phelan, where's Clark? I know he came with you. Just tell me what you had on him. <laughs> Thank goodness this guy was super arrogant. Like, he wouldn't tell Luthor. So that's that's good at least. And now he's dead. So no problems. All the charges have been dropped. <laughs> With profuse apologies from the state and Metropolis Police Department. Then it's finally over. Well, well this time. But unfortunately, there's more than one failing out there in the world. What do we do next time? I don't know, son. We're just gonna have to deal with it when the time comes. 
Oh, right. I forgot about her. Oh my nice. gosh. <laughs> you gonna come to bed? Completely forgot about her. I guess that's gonna be a continuing storyline? I thought it was just gonna be for this episode, but I guess not. Oh no, the security cams were on! Oh! Oh! That's how it ends! <laughs> oh, that's great. So that was Smallville Season 1, Episode 9, entitled Rogue. This was my favorite episode. I think, I think it has to be. Episode 5 was great, and it's still second, but this was my favorite episode. I was super captivated. It took what worked last episode. They took that and did it even better here. I, and I thought I loved hating this guy, the bad guy of the week. Even though he wasn't a freak of the week like normal, he didn't have any powers, nothing. But him using Clark as his secret agent, basically, sending him in to do things for him. I mean, he only did two things for him and one of them, he was with Clark doing it. But the whole blackmail scenario of him blackmailing Clark and his parents because of Clark's powers, I thought it was really well done. And this guy, I can't remember his name, but the cop, this dirty cop, he was really good. The actor played him really well. The writing was really good. He had a similar vibe to the coach. Not in the sense that, oh, he's a hothead. No, no, no. But he has this thing where it's like, you just really don't like this guy. Like he, he's really unlikable and that's how he's written and portrayed. But unlike the coach, who was just completely unlikable, just didn't like him. This guy, I just kind of liked not liking him. He had this persona to him where when he would, every scene he was in, he was just kind of an annoying jerk, but he almost winked. It was almost like a winking at the camera performance where it was like, yeah, I know I'm a jerk and you're going to hate me. <laughs> and I, I did. I hated him, but loved hating him. So shout out to the writers of this, of that episode, of this episode for really doing a good job at writing him in that complex way. I really liked how far they were able to push Clark in this episode as well. Being blackmailed and even having Jonathan be framed for murder and going to jail. This guy pushed Clark so much that when Clark was like really angry and you know, he punched the, the support beam in his house and he grabbed the guy and slammed him against the wall and was like really wanting to kill him. Like that was really well done. That scene was a really good scene. The scene, you know, the Barry Allen and his father type of scene at the prison where he's taught, where Clark is there talking to Jonathan behind the glass. I thought that was a really good scene as well. My favorite scene though, hands down, was when he chucks the safe out the at, out the building onto his car. He said, I want the safe. Well, I guess he said what was what's in the safe, but I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was great. Also, I loved the way that Lex's storyline was incorporated into Clark's. Like Lex had his side storyline, which is probably gonna keep going from in the next episode, in the next episode or whatever, with this female friend of his that he, I guess, knew years prior. I thought that was a good storyline, but I loved even more how Lex, knowing the cop, kind of roped himself into the storyline. Just Lex being on Clark's trail, I just love how they incorporated it. All the storylines just were really good this week. Even the even the Lana Chloe storyline I thought was pretty solid. Chloe, you know, she lost her job with the school working as the the head of the paper. That is her thing. She loves that. That's like me losing you guys, losing the YouTube stuff. Like I just wouldn't want to lose that. So I get where she's coming from there. It's what defines her or what she believes defines her. I get how Chloe sees what happened with Lana. Like she almost sees Lana as this opposing force because Lana is the girl of Clark's dreams, but Chloe likes Clark. Then when Lana gets the paper and becomes the executive of the paper or whatever, Chloe sees that as a red, a giant red flag of like, first you're stealing my man and now you're stealing my thing, my paper. Like, no! So I get where Chloe's coming from, and I really liked how that that whole storyline resolved. I thought it was really good character development for Chloe, which to be honest, we never get any development with Chloe, so I thought that was really good. I thought it, I thought it was really nice. So 
yeah, I just really love this episode, but let me know what you guys thought about this episode down in the comments below. If you're new to the channel though, I'd like to ask that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and hit the bell so you get notified every time I'm dropping a new episode of Smallville every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you wanna see the full length reaction, get the full experience of watching these episodes along with me, go check it out on my Patreon page, linked in the description below. You don't wanna miss out on the full length reactions because you're missing out on so much due to copyright and me having to cut it out. So go check it out on uh, Patreon and I will see you guys this Thursday with another episode of Smallville. That's a wrap. Woo! I am on break. I'm gonna live like a king by doing my thing. Hey, I am on break. I'm gonna live like free. I'm gonna do it like me. Yeah, yeah. I am on break. No, this is not fake. I'm just chilling on break.